Good evening. This is Veronica Quinn coming to you live from the grave of Sonia Kovaleskia. So, Ms. Kovaleskia, I know everyone is itching to know what it was like to enjoy math and be told no by your own father. It's Sonia. Now, even though my father disapproved of me learning mathematics, it was always, it was what I had always delighted in, even at a young age. When I was 11, the walls of my room were paper with Ostergrad's he's lecture notes on differential and integral analysis. I even had a tutor, but father stopped my mathematics lessons when I neglected my other studies. But did that stop me? No. I borrowed a copy of Bordeaux's algebra and read it when everyone else was sleeping. Did your father ever let you carry on your mathematical studies? Yes. He finally let me several, several years after our neighbor, Professor Tirtho, gave us a physics book he had written. I tried to understand it and then to explain it to myself. When Professor Tirto realized how intelligent I was, he argued with my father to let me continue my studies. Did you ever get to study beyond the confinement of your home? Yes. Thanks to my husband, Vladimir, I married him because he promised to take me to further my study. Although there were frequent quarrels and misunderstandings, I admit I cared for him. So I left Russia and traveled to Heidelberg. Where did you study? I persuaded some university authorities to give me the pleasure of attending lectures unofficially. I successfully studied at the university for three semesters. Then I moved to Berlin to study with Wertress, who was one of the university professor's teachers. Well, how did that go? At first, he thought it was all a big joke. He told me he only teaches the most advanced students who are working to get their doctorate. I pleaded with him to give me a pre preliminary examination to prove I was a worthy student. What happened? He gave me problems for his most advanced students, thinking I couldn't do it. But oh, how I proved him wrong. One week later, I returned to him. I had not only found the answers to the different difficult problems, but also to the ones that had his promising male pupils stumped. He had to accept you then, didn't he? You must have been quite pleased with yourself. I just wanted to learn more on analytical math and partial differential equations. Did you have any other great accomplishments in your lifetime? Well, I won the French Academy of Sciences Prix Bourdin. The Academy was so impressed that they doubled the reward. I was the only woman in that time to hold a chair in mathematics at the University of Stockholm, and the first woman admitted to the Academy of Science in my native Russia. Wow, what thesis won you such an award? Well, it was over the rotation of solid bodies. It contained the solution to a problem that had other great mathematics with mathematicians dumbfounded. However, it is a science which requires a great amount of imagination. That is lovely, but whatever happened to Vladimir? Well, in 1878, I gave birth to our daughter, but returned to my study of mathematics soon after. I worked on the refraction of light and wrote three articles, but only the first was a valuable paper because it contained Wertrich's theory for integrating certain partial differential equations. Then in the spring, 1883, sweet Vladimir committed suicide. He had been we had been separated for two years. Oh my, I am so sorry. Yes. The guilt I felt was only bearable thanks to my studies in the mathematics. Well, I guess I better be going back to my deep slumber. Wait. Yes. Whatever happened? I taught courses on the latest topics of analysis and became an editor of the journal Acta Mathematica. I took part in the original in the organization of international conferences, and I even wrote some dramas. Then I won the French Academy of Science Prix Bourdin that I told you about earlier. My further research on the subject won me a prize from the Swedish Academy of Sciences. The last article I wrote before I died was a simpler proof of Brun's theorem on a property of the potential function of homogeneous body. Then, at the height of my reputation, I died due to influenza complicated by pneumonia, attempting to avoid a village with a smallpox epidemic. I am awfully sorry, but what would you say your main two contributions to science and mathematics were? Well, my most recognized contribution was my paper on the problem of the rotation of a solid body about a fixed point. Then, I say my second was publishing a simpler proof of Brun's theorem. Thank you for joining us this evening, Sonia.
This has been Veronica Quinn reporting to you live from Sonia Kowalewski's Grind. Thank you for watching.